Well, yes, but before Megan goes anywhere, it's her birthday today, so give it up to her. Happy birthday, Megan! <laughs> Be sure to catch her at Bash and, uh, and get a drink with her. All right, so uh, my name is Manav, uh, this is Peter. Uh, we did this session yesterday. Uh, we were in a smaller room and a lot of you could not get, get a seat in, so we thought we'll repeat the session here today for you uh, and uh, walk you through what you can do with Twilio messaging. Uh, now, this session is an introductory session. Our goal here is to walk you through the different types of messaging building blocks that Twilio makes available to you and what you can do with those messaging building blocks in terms of solving business uh, problems that you have or the different use cases uh, that you might have. Now, uh, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna walk you through a few of those uh, concepts first uh, at a theory level, and then Peter is gonna take it away and do a lot of live demos for you, showing you how all of this works together and, and see how you can build this uh, for yourselves. Uh, talking about demos, uh, everybody take out your phones and do us a favor Text either one or two to 415-769-3217. We're asking uh, for you to text in so you can participate in a lot of the live demos we have for you uh, throughout the session. Again, you can text either one or two, whatever your favorite number is, to 415-769-3217. Quick show of hands when you're done. Okay, looks like more than half of folks are done. Okay, looks like you're getting done pretty quickly here. All right, let's move on. So, uh, you know, the, the premise of this, this session and this talk here really stems from this very common thing that happens with every Twilio employee. If a friend or a family member goes to a Twilio employee and asks them, hey, where do you work? What does that company Twilio do? The most common response is, hey, you know when you order a car from Lyft or Uber or any of these services and you get that text message that your driver is outside? That comes through, comes through Twilio. That's what Twilio does. And nine out of 10 times, that, met, that description is met with a quizzical look from the listener going, huh? What do you mean? Texting is easy. Everybody can send a message. Why is that a big deal? The reason that, and obviously we are all oversimplifying it to our friends and family that are not technical, but the reason why that is different is because sending a message is a lot different than building a messaging app where your software is able to send and receive messages from the code that you write. And, you know, and when you build a messaging app, there's a lot more you have to think about than just whip out your phone, sign, put a number in and send a message. You have to think about what kind of use case are you building? Is it a one-way messaging use case or a two-way messaging use case? Are you just sending messages out? Or are you also gonna handle replies coming in? Are you gonna send the same message to a very large number of people, like a bulk message, maybe a text marketing message? Or are you gonna have transactional messages which has content that is specific to a particular person? Right? Depending on your answer here on whether it's one way or two way, bulk or transactional, the kind of technology you use underneath, how you write your application, what considerations you have from a compliance regulation point of view change. And that's why this question is the first question you should be answering when you're thinking about building your text or messaging application. The next question you should be asking yourself is, okay, I know I'm gonna do a certain kind of messaging app. What messaging channel am I going to use? Messaging is not one thing. There are many, many different ways to send a message and receive a message. You could use SMS, you could use in-app chat, you could send a message via push notifications, you could send messages via social apps like Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, many other uh, different options, but they all behave very differently in terms of the attributes they all have. Just to kind of simplify this very long table for you, if you are trying to send a message to a very large number of people and you don't know what kind of app or what kind of device they might have, but they have a mobile phone, use SMS, because it reaches everybody. If you're trying to send a, do a two-way conversation with your customers who have your mobile app, we suggest using chat. It can be very rich, it can be part of the overall app context, uh, there's a lot more you can do in that environment. 
If you're sending a one-way message and you want to do that to invoke something inside a mobile app that you've given to your customers, suggest doing push notifications. It's cheaper than SMS, and it uh, is, ties right into the mobile app experience that you've built for your customers. Right? And then if you want to do something uh, that is within a broader social context, like the message you are sending is about a, a social engagement thing, then use a, a social app where privacy may not be a concern, but the, the social context is, is more important. Okay? So let's put some of this theory to practice. Let's think about this lovely bank called Owl Bank, who, uh, let's, for the purposes of this discussion, let's say is in the business of providing mortgage services to its customers. And, you know, it's Memorial Day coming up. Uh, it's the peak of the home buying season. Uh, let's say that Owl Bank has come up with a great mortgage rate for this Memorial Day period, and it wants to tell all, everybody in its database uh, that they have a special mortgage rate uh, for uh, the next five days. Uh, but then maybe uh, one of the marketers wants to get a little bit more fancy and says, you know what, I want to segment my marketing message. I want to send people that are pre-approved for a loan a special type of message, whereas for people that are not pre-approved a different message. And then for people that are pre-approved, I also want to give them the opportunity to reply back to that message directly and get signed up for the new rate right away via the text messaging uh, interface. So to make this happen, Peter and I are going to show you uh, a way to build, get this all done. Uh, we would suggest that if you want to tell everybody in your database uh, about something, you would use a bulk SMS type application. If you want to do some kind of segmentation where you're giving two different messages to different audiences, um, it's a segmented bulk SMS. But then if you are giving, doing replies back that is bespoke to each customer that replies back, that's more of a transactional chat type, type scenario. And to get this all built, uh, Peter in a minute here is going to show you how you can use programmable SMS to send out a bulk uh, message out to everybody. And using Copilot, figure out how to scale that mes those messages so they arrive on time and you, you do that within the confines of regulations and compliance to get that done. Then, if you want to do segmented bulk messaging, we're going to switch to a different product called Notify that Pat talked about this morning where you specify the user and Twilio figures out which segment are they in and, and gets the message across to them. It's more of a declarative API like, uh, like Jeff was talking about yesterday. And then to handle replies to the, your pre-approved customers, we're going to show tying SMS to chat so that an agent that's behind a, a computer screen in a central office can re respond to many different messages uh, that are coming back as, as replies. So enough of me yapping. Uh, Peter, let's get to it and, 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 sh and show how this works. All right. Thank you, Manav. So one of the great things about being a sales engineer here at Twilio is that we get to see what all of our customers do. And having seen so many customer implementations, there's always a point at which they start, and as they grow and get bigger and scale their implementation, there's a very set path that they take in reaching out to their customer base. So what we're going to see here today is a few basic ways in which we can show it. So this is some basic SMS code that you can get off our website in the quick starts. And it really is, what I'm doing here is that I'm looking for all the messages that came into the phone number that texted in a few minutes ago. For everybody that texted in, I'm going to send you a message, Memorial Day special from our bank. Um, let's actually go to something else. And can let's zoom in over here. Can you guys see the screen over here? Great. All right, great. And so what we're going to do is that we're just going to do a simple sending of the SMS. No, not this one. And let's, so the internet's cooperating. And you can see it's taking a little bit of time to send out these text messages, right? One phone number, one message per second. Nope, that's not. And it's going to slowly spin. So we'll let that run in the background, and all of you will be getting text messages. So we've seen all of our customers encounter this problem where one message per second was too slow when you're talking of a customer base of the thousands, the tens of thousands. So what did we tell them to do? The sales engineering team, we told them, use multiple phone numbers, have 
10 phone numbers and you get 10 messages per second. But then with an imperative API, you would then have to manage a number pool, you would then have to build logic as to how do I load distribute all these messages, the phone numbers, when responses come in, how do I know which phone number they, we originally sent the message to them from. And so we built a product called Copilot. And you can find Copilot in the console, it's a messaging service. What it allows you to do is that you can structure these messaging services to contain pools of phone numbers. And with these pools of phone numbers, I'm now, Twilio has taken away the complexity of managing this number pool for yourself and put it into a product called Copilot that's completely free. And one of the best things about this is that I can add an existing shortcode to this implementation. So for our largest customers, they're sending the millions of messages a month, a shortcode really empowers their use case to send messages at scale. And the easiest thing is that when it comes to changing the code, all I had to do is replace, I'll take this messaging service it, and I'll change our from parameter to it. All right, come on. I'll save go back to my terminal, and I'll send that again. And you should be receiving these messages a lot quicker now. You can see that it's printing the screen a lot quicker, messages are going a lot quicker. So that's one way you could scale your text messages to go from one phone number to a co-pilot, which is number pool. We can show you the new product that Pat talked about. It's a different way. Because in this way, you're keeping track of all the SMS, you're keeping track of the phone numbers. First, we need to create a bindings with a new way. The Twitter product notify lets you segment your usage. So what you did when you texted in earlier, 102, all of that information is in the database on our backend. And we have tracked down your responses, 102. And what we're going to do is that for every user that texted in, we're going to look at a segment. And we're going to segment to you into two different groups. So for a marketer, this means that I can have my pre-approved uh, applicants in one pool. And I can reach out to them with specific comp uh, communications. And non-approved applicants, I can send a different type of communication. So let us run this real quick. Python create bindings. All right, and so the bindings are all going. We'll give it a second to run. So with these bindings, in the past with just simple SMS, you would have to keep track of all this logic, you have to keep making queries, filters inside of your server and take on the, the maintenance of managing. With the new declarative APIs, when we come to sending a notification, all we have to do is just say that anybody that's been tagged with one, so if you're in group one pre-approved, we're gonna give you a Memorial Day special and we're gonna encourage you to reply in. But let's make sure we don't forget about group two. I can say that group two, we're gonna tell you that the Memorial Day special is from Owl Bank, but instead of asking you to reply, we'll say please visit www.owlbank. Dot com. And so now we'll run these notifications. So that should be all flying out right now. Raise your hand when you get a notification. All right, bunch of people. For those of you who had texted in one and your message says, please reply now, I encourage you to send in a text message, please reply now. We'll move on to the next portion of the demo, which is handling inbound requests. So you'll see that there's a whole, this is our agent interface. There's a lot of responses coming in here, and who is the individual with the last four digits, three, four, one, one? Is that really you? <laughs> right. And so I said, hi, I can text in, hi, this is Peter with Owl Bank. I can help lock in your rate. Did you get the reply? Yes. All right, so how does all this work? We'll carry on your presentation. First, we'll, we have a web server that's listening. So any incoming SMS that goes to Twilio, you text it in one, and it was posted to my server on the back end. As part of that inbound flow, what I did was that I created a new programmable chat user and a new programmable chat channel and placed both the browser user, so this is our agent behind the CRM, into that chat, and you as the consumer behind a cell phone you will also put in there. And my backend does all the translation from SMS to chat. Once that's created, the channel's created, I show the browser user that the new channel's been created and that there's a new chat. Now that we've done you know, a basic SMS to chat translation and we have one end of the communication inside a very powerful computing device, what else could we do? Right? Could we use technology to do more 
with less. So I know Manav likes to say that he speaks multiple languages, so I'm going to have him help o me. Only with Google Translate. Only with Google Translate. <laughs> I'm going to have him help me with the second portion of the demo. So you know, going back, this is my agent interface. I have today's rates for me. I'll let Manav spin out his text message. And you can see that when your agents are behind a CRM, you can supply them with any information you need, including the fact that the rates at Evil Corp Bank are tremendously over everybody else. And so you see that Manav has now texted in a few messages, and he's texting in Spanish. I do not speak a lick of Spanish. However, I've built a little bot called Watson in here who can translate whenever it detects what the language is. So Watson does a best effort guess and sees that Necesito esa tarifa hoy is Spanish, translated, I need that rate today. Now as an agent, even though I do not speak Spanish, I can actually read what the what they need help with, and I can find, give them in documentation in Spanish and send that over. So going back to the flow, how does this work? Right. You'll see that your inbound text message was one, and we texted it back. All right, so I s apologies, I skipped over a little bit. This was the flow back. When a, an agent texts back into the server, it actually goes back to the server and sees that you know, this, this text box in yellow is actually a chat. I need to rebroadcast it as an SMS. And then my server takes the phone number, takes the chat, and then finds out who to send it to. And then it sends back out to your cell phone. Now for the Watson piece, we have a Spanish text that comes in. It goes to the back end. With one extra API call to IBM Watson, I get the translation I need. And then I put it back to our agent behind the CRM. So we've kept this demo simple because we want to show you that with just a few items in Twilio, Twilio programmable SMS, Twilio programmable chat, and the power of our marketplace add-ons, you can build deeply engaging customer workflows with just a few items. So we have plenty more add-ons. IBM Watson has mesh sentiment where you can process how your consumer is feeling. Are they upset? Are they feeling good? What's the likelihood they are to buy? And leverage the power of machine learning and AI to add more intelligence to your workflows. We also have add-ons like White Pages Pro that gives you phone number intelligence, where you could look at where the incoming phone number is coming from, pick up demographic information, and figure out in your lead sorting what you would like to do with them. So these are just a few of the multiple things that you could build with Twilio. We can't wait to see what you build. Back onto you, Manav, to wrap up. All right, thanks, Peter. All right, folks. So. Um uh, what we saw here was uh, how you can build one-way bulk SMS with programmable SMS, the API that lets you add uh, and send and receive messages from your code, but also with Copilot, which is an intelligent service that allows you to scale your messaging application. We talked about segmenting messages across different types of audiences. We use Notify for that particular use case, makes it a lot easier to, to orchestrate different types of messaging across different types of users and even also channels. And then uh, using chat into the mix, uh, aggregating all the messages they get back for a particular agent that's usually sitting behind uh, a screen. Uh, we can talk through all of this. If you have uh, the next level of questions here, uh, right now, after we end, a uh, lot of our colleagues are at the Twilio booth just uh, down the hall upstairs. Uh, we're happy to walk you through all of that. And then um, there are also a couple more sessions for the remainder of the day where we're going to walk through, or the team's going to be walking through different aspects of, of messaging. Uh, one at uh, 3.45 around verification, using messaging for verification, and one at 5.45 uh, for add-ons marketplace. We're really uh, thankful that you spent your time here with us at Signal for the last uh, day and a half. Uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the day here. Thank you so much for joining us.